guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are playing another glorious Napoleon Total War battle for you here. And it is on the most iconic map of them all, of course, the map of Waterloo. Me and my friend Vasco are playing the French, fighting a combined force of the Dard Russian and Prussian empires. And we have literally an uphill battle ready to go very very brutal battle one of the most brutal battles i think i've ever played on napoleon total war online the losses were immense on every side and it came down right to the absolute wire now the um rules for this match were um, no more than five lights no howitzers um, and no more than two artillery no fixed artillery so pretty standard rules um, of course, you can see there is armies already setting up and we are going to go through the armies now. So this is my army on the far left. We have four units of the Chasseur standard. We have one six pounder horse artillery, which um, whereabouts is it? It is hiding in the back. I was hiding it just for later. Uh, we have four Chasseur à cheval, the very overpowered for their price French uh, unit look at them glorious sergeant here or officer um, I'm assuming that's an officer to be fair uh, ready to lead his men into battle uh, we have four of the glorious Polish Legion look at these boys ready to fight for France fantastic now the reason why I brought these is they generally have a better melee stat for their price than the equivalent priced units like the Fusiliers of the line I also had one Swiss foot, another slightly better unit than the Fusiliers of the line, uh, but just a little bit more expensive, so worth it. And I had two of the wonderful, wonderful old guard ready to fight. I knew I needed some seriously strong melee troops in here. So two of these uh, old guard, one of the wonderful young guard. And that concludes my army. So let's have a look at Vasco's, if we can tell in all this mess. But he himself has three chasseurs à cheval. Uh, no, sorry. He has three chasseurs. One uh, of the 6th Regiment d'Infanterie Légère. So one of the brilliant light infantry. Slightly better than the chasseurs in general. But here are his glorious chasseurs. Four of the Swiss foot here they are in their red coats. Four of the Polish Legion, similar to me. So bringing the Polish Legion for the melee attack. One Fusilier of the line. But I'm not going to lie, I don't know whether we can find it in here. One Fusilier of the line, somewhere in here, guys. Um, one of the glorious Old Guard, which I think I did see in there before. That looks like an Old Guard there. There he is. One of the Old Guard. Marching in the column. And one or two militia. I believe it's two. But he set his troops all up like this. So it's quite hard to count one of these standard militia. Not even the National Guard. Just standard militia. Two chasseurs à cheval. Which you can see dotted about the battlefield. Um, and a standard general. I forgot to mention my general is also just a it's standard a general staff. I believe everyone's general is that. Now let's look at our glorious opponent's. The wonderful Russian Empire. And he's brought a very elite army here. So he's brought two 12-pounder foot artillery. Ready to get that canister shot into us. He's brought the 17th Jaeger Regiment. Which was over here before. Where have they gone? There they are. 17th Jaeger. So only one light foot. Look at those green uniforms. Almost like the rifles. Except they don't actually carry rifles. They just carry muskets. Uh, not the brown bess, I believe. I can't remember what the Russian musket's called. Um, but yes, four. A whole four of the Olpaneshi. So the militia regiment for the Russians. Where are the rest of them? They must be hiding in the trees around here somewhere. But here's one of them. Four of these guys. God, they look like hard, tough men. Look at those beards. Glorious beard for these boys. Uh, he's brought... One of the standard Grenadier in here somewhere. That's the Alpaneshi. But there you can see the Grenadiers ready to go. 
and one of the Pavlovsky Grenadiers. Where are they? Here we are. Well, sorry, Pavlovsk Grenadiers. Wonderful hats. Glorious looking troops. Uh, is there any more times that I can say glorious in this introduction? I do not know, guys. I do not know. And four of the Lifeguard Foot. Very elite. The most elite Russian unit you can get. So, a very, very elite force that he's got here. And that is for good reason. That is because he is going to be defending up this hill. And he needs troops that are good in melee and ready to fight uh, in melee very quickly. Now, let's look at our Prussian... Oh, sorry, we forgot about the cavalry. He's got three units of the Cossack cavalry. A very cost-effective, very effective um, Lancer unit. Pretty strong pretty decent troops so a very elite army that he's got here so let's look at the prussians they actually have five units of the prussian fusiliers so five units of light infantry which are going to prove deadly in this battle he has brought seven of the standard musketeers and that's the thing with prussia you can really pump out a lot of troops because their troops are generally pretty cheap um so he's brought seven of the musketeers two of the wonderful foot guards with these little pom-poms what are they i don't think the rendering's that good but what actually would they be they look like just little like <laughs> like sponges on their helmets i don't know what the official name of those is it'd be nice if someone could put that down in the description below um two six pounder horse artillery which he uses to great effect during this battle at the start they're just across here you know shooting across not doing that much but he will move them later on and then in terms of cavalry, he has brought some standard Hussars. Very nice uniform there. He has brought the Life Hussars. Some of the Guard Hussars. Look at that. Almost like the Brandenburg troops that you can get as Britain. Oh, so the skull on the, uh, on the head there. And some of Lutzau's Freikorps. So uh, these are kind of like militia cavs. So that's not the strongest unit of cav, but these guys are very good. Nice light cavalry, and he is led by its standard general staff. Now, let's get over to the actual battle. Look at this push that we are manning on the left-hand side. You can see we are fully devoted to the left-hand side down here, and we will put it on normal play. And you can see he is using his militia to just basically um, tank all the shots while we bring our chasseurs up and shoot those cannons because we do not want to deal with that canister shot whatsoever and as you can see the canister shot is raining down on our troops and his own troops look at that look at the glorious smoke it is good to be back in napoleon it is a fantastic game one of my favorite games on multiplayer uh, and you can check my little poll out i did on the channel on my community page as well recently um where you know we polled who likes to play multiplayer and single player. And I've got to say, single player is what I play Total War for on nearly every t Total War game, apart from Napoleon. Napoleon is definitely a game I play for multiplayer, not for single player. But as you can see, he brought some cavalry down. A good move by him to try and get rid of some of the chasseurs. But <coughs> it's not really going to work too well because of all these units we have here. We have so many units, and at this point in time, we can't actually really tell between my troops and his. Uh, but as we go on, we will see the separation start to occur. But yes, look at that. And as you can see, we've already taken out a lot of his cannons. He's down to basically three cannons rather than eight uh, that he had before. So we've done a very good job of silencing them, but at the cost of a, basically all our light infantry, uh, which is unfortunate, but there's not much we can do there. <laughs> it was a planned attack, and it worked. I would say that it worked. And also on top of this now, he can't move this cannon at least. This cannon might be able to get moved, but it will probably glitch out if they try to move it now. Yes, you can see. Here we are again, coming up. Now this was his push. My troops were all at the back. So he wanted to push first and let me um, let me sit back and do some damage on my own. But as you can see, he's bringing his militia perfectly as a meat shield for these guys. 
And he's going for the great charge into the building. Look at the Polish Legion go. Fantastic. They're trying to take Hougamont. And it's very reminiscent of the real Battle of Waterloo. Except these should have been British troops. Um, a great, great assault on Hougamont. And will Hougamont fall? We shall not know for, y for now. But as you can see, this, this 12 pound of foot artillery down to one troop. This one still got nine, so still can fire, but only down to one cannon. So at this point, we have silenced those darn cannons. And he has his troops in here, causing chaos. But the main battle is in this house. He has his lifeguard foot in there, a very strong unit in melee. And the Semenovsky lifeguard. Absolute beasts uh, in melee. So these Polish Legion, although they are generally better than some of the other troops in melee, they are not the best compared to actual guard, elite guard troops. So that is going to be a big issue. As you can see, I decided to bring my chasseurs across to see whether I could probe. But it didn't work, so we brought them back. Unfortunately, at this point, though, he gets some amazing shots off with his cannon doing some serious damage. Look at that. Oh, God, that chasseur got shredded. So I had to move my chasseurs out of there. Oh, and I believe this guy starts running. Yep, and probably this guy as well. So they were brutal cannon shots by the Prussians there. <coughs> causing my troops to run. As you can see, some of these chasseurs coming across. I wanted to try and probe around this right-hand side. Because I could see there was a kind of split here. Where he doesn't have that many troops. Just some troops in this building. So if we could come up and try and put some pressure on the Prussians, that might help alleviate the problems on the left-hand side. But as you can see, more and more troops are being fed into the building here. Come on, lads! The Polish boys absolutely going ham in here. Brutally uh, attacking anyone inside Hugemont and fighting to the last man. Honestly, these Polish Legion were really good. Look at them. Down to 60 already in this unit. Which is crazy. And 55. And they're still fighting. They didn't rout. What brave boys they were. Brave, brave boys they were. And as you can see, across here, I am bringing some of my troops across. Try and do some damage. Or is he? I can't remember. I think that's me. Yeah, that's me Our bringing troops across. Ready, now, I still have all my elites ready to go as well. And some fusiliers of the line at the back. He's got his militia back in the action. My horses have come back across this way. Uh, just basically out of that cannon fire. Because that was brutal, that cannon fire. And as you can see, we are marching up on these musketeers. And we're going to go ham on these guys. As well as bringing the six-pounder horse artillery to start firing into them. But yes, here go the volleys. Come on, boys. Yes, look at that volley into those Prussian fusiliers. Only 120 of them, of course, because they're a light infantry unit. So they are going to get shredded by our fire here. And we're going to unlimber that cannon and start firing into the enemy. But at this point as well, I had these Polish Legion were actually assigned to go into the building. And they weren't going in. They were kind of glitching out. As you can see, he's got his lifeguard in there. Still the Semenovsky and lifeguard and some militia. So it is a massive... Brutal battle. And he really has some of the best uh, melee troops that you can get in the whole game. Look at the fields of dead in here. They're just kind of standing looking at each other. Not even fighting at this point. Because they're so amazed by the brutality of this battle. Very reminiscent of the real battle for Hougamont. Uh, in the Battle of Waterloo. So, yes, very, very, very cool, but also completely brutal. And as you can see, my six-pounder horse artillery putting down the pain on these guys, as well as my chasseurs and all that stuff. He did bring his foot guards up, but as I say, we do have some decent, uh, decent uh, rival to him here with the uh, Polish Legion and the Swiss foot ready to fire into his long line of troops. But of course, the battle still rages on over this side. And uh, my friend here, Vasco, is just resting his troops underneath the underneath the ridge. 
so that they can't shoot on him. You can see, like, there's no way that they can shoot him unless they come right up to the edge of the line. And at this point, he decides to kind of move his troops slightly. But as you can see, these guys are holding strong. And you can see my general's getting shot by his cannons once again, which was an absolute nightmare of a scenario. And there it goes. My general died. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. And that is two battles in a row where my general's been sniped by artillery, which is incredibly annoying. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and we brought the young guard across to try and deal with these foot guards because we knew that we could deal with them with the old young guard. And as you can see, we are shredding them on this left-hand side, but we really needed to secure the building before we got uh, we got up the hill and around. But look at the fields of dead already. And we're not even halfway through the battle, guys. It has been brutal so far. And he still has a lot of troops, including some elites like the Pavlovsk Grenadiers. He has 120 of those boys and a lot of this lifeguard foot left. As well as the, basically the whole building. But as you can see, six pounder horse artillery here doing damage. Firing into the enemy. And I decided to try and fire into the middle building there. I can't remember which one which one's that called. Is that the uh, La Bella Alliance? But that was... No, that was... But La Bella Alliance was the place he stayed in this village, right? In the village of Waterloo. So I can't quite remember, but it should come back to me, hopefully. Uh, La Haye Saint? La Haye Saint? Or was La Haye Saint this? I can't remember. I'm just rambling now, but yes. I'm a big Napoleonic Wars fan. Not fan. I don't like war. <laughs> but um, a big nerd on the history. I love the history. Napoleonic Wars, very interesting. Very interesting time period for the whole of Europe. But look at this. He decides to try and push us back from the side. And as you can see, all these troops. But because they are, even though they are lined up like this, they're fighting up, they're shooting upwards. So they're not actually shooting into the back of their own troops, which is great for us. And he goes for the great charge. Look at that. Brutal charge all the way down the line. Massive charge from the Russians. Luckily, Vasco goes into square. Good formation to uh, fight the infantry while we are still going for this. Look at these Fusiliers in now. Fusiliers and Polish Legion fighting to 39 men, which was just absolutely crazy to us. Like, Polish Legion were the MVPs of this battle. So brave fighting the lifeguard in here. But look at the Russians taunting us out the window. Look at him. He's smiling. He knows they still have control of Hougamont. But, of course, they won't have control of it for the whole battle because the great French Empire will decide to feed troops in constantly. Over this side, we did smash uh, the Prussians back. And my young guard did take a huge beating, though, in the battle. And he is trying to focus them down with his artillery. So at this point, I was thinking it's probably time to get back a little bit. Maybe... Uh, Bring the old guard forward to see what they can do in the battle. And then I brought my six pounder horse artillery slightly forward to try and get some canister shot off at these guys. But as you can see, they can shoot us, which was not a good idea by me. Very, very bad misstep. And in the battle over here, look at this. Brutal, brutal fighting over here. And as you can see, I decided to bring my chasseurs a cheval in. Because he had brought his Cossacks in. And we needed to get rid of those Cossacks. Those darn Cossacks that, you know, faced us all the way back from Moscow. Threatened us. Killed us. Ambushed us all the way back from Moscow. It is now time to take our revenge on them. And we do manage to break them. Which was a good result for us. Because that means I had two units of Chasseurs à Cheval ready to go still. Two pretty decent units. And we went straight into these musketeers try and cause chaos on their side so that we could reorganize because we really were in a bit of chaos ourselves and as you can see this militia is finally about to die um, but this Semenovsky lifeguard has been in since the start and they've only lost 60 just shows you how good in melee they are 
But as you can see, he is feeding more troops into the house as well as us. So it is a just never-ending pit of despair for both sides of the battlefield. A pit of brutality. And as you can see, these troops are coming up the coming up the rank now. I need a ramp? Ramp? We're coming up the ramp now, ready to fight. But there is fighting going on in all corners of this. Oh, brutal. Straight in him. Oh, no. His mate just got killed. Stabbed. But it was a absolutely brutal fight. Look at the dead that pile upon the floor inside Hugamon. And as I say, very reminiscent of the reminiscent of the real life Hugamon fight. As you can see, he brings his life hussars into my chasseurs, and he is going to do away with those chasseurs once and for all. Chasseur à cheval. Our men are running, sir. Uh, as you can see over here, something we missed was I lost my cannons. My cannons actually um, had a tough time of it. They got charged down by the enemy. There they are. Uh, I overextended them and brought them forward too much. And at this point, I stopped my assault on the right-hand side because I knew at this point it was futile. This was what's going to happen. Troops are going to rout. Troops are going to run. And I needed these troops to focus up. And now that we'd opened a space up here, we had space to march up and around and try and take out the Prussian troops. But as you can see, he still has a load, a genuine load of troops. And we're pretty beaten and broken at this point. So, at this point, we thought it might be over. It might be over. We've expended too much in this building. But just as we were thinking that, the building starts to become almost, almost like... It might get taken by us. Almost. But as you can see, brutal fighting continuing on this hill. I brought my old guard in to charge them down. Or was that his old guard? I can't quite remember. But look at the fields of dead that litter this place. It is brutal. And the fields of dead. Literal mound of dead in here as the fighting continues in Hugamon. A lot of them just standing around, which is kind of weird to me. But I guess they're waiting to do an animation. And maybe when they're in a building, it doesn't animate them the same way. But they're even up here on top. But as you can see, we are starting to win out eventually this battle. Uh, and we bring the old guard back. What is the fighting here? Ah, some musketeers. He brought some musketeers in. So we decided to charge them. And at this point... We, it was looking tough. It didn't look like we were going to win at this point. But we had to do something. We had to keep going. We had to push up the hill. We knew if we could just take Hugamon, we might win the battle. Very much like Napoleon himself. And, uh, I mean, in the real Battle of Waterloo, he kept feeding troops into Hugamon throughout the whole day. Uh, even though it was Prince Eugène... Uh, was leading the division, I believe. And even though... Here come the old guard into the building. Now, that is really going to spell disaster for these guys now. Although they are lifeguard, they are going to be scared of that old guard unit. Um, even though Prince Eugène um, was ordered to just go around Hugomont and attack the ridge, he decided to just basically just feed troops into Hugomont non-stop. And that really hindered the left-hand side of the attack um, of the French army. Um, really hindered them. I mean, needless to say, there was a lot of mistakes made at Waterloo by Napoleon himself and his marshals. But that mistake by Prince Eugène was probably one of the deciding factors. Because if Hugomont hadn't have held for so long, the Prussians wouldn't have arrived. The old guard wouldn't have broken. And uh, Napoleon would most likely have won genuinely so as you can see it looks very much like we are done at this point like it looks like we might be dead um, but this battle is going to carry on for a long time because there are two units of the finest elites ready to get into the action two of the absolute beastly boys ready to go and in true napoleonic fashion we have waited until the last moment to bring these guys into the action as you can see 
the big old guard getting into the action, true Napoleonic fashion. We are going to bring them in at the last moment, the decisive moment in the battle, and hope that they can turn the tide of the brutal right-hand side or left-hand side of the attack. But as you can see, he's kind of, the Prussian player's kind of wasting a few of his troops here. He's just put this musketeer out here, just lonely by itself. And uh, the old guard is going to start taking their pot shots if they can. Yep, here they go. Here they go, I believe. Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on, old guard. They were just being a bit weird, really. But what are they doing? Like, I've told them to attack them, and, and they're doing that. What are they doing? So, we bring them back. <laughs> we bring them back. They were just being dumb. Here you can see the Polish Legion and the Old Guard still fighting strong. He's going to feed even more Musketeers into the fight. Which is crazy. Like, it was just an absolute slaughtering ground. Look at the dead. The litter. Oh my god, this entrance is even worse. Constant fields of dead inside here. Oh no, he's just been killed. Oh, he's been bashed backwards. Can't even tell between Prussian and French troops. You can tell between the Russian and uh, French. But not the Prussian and French at the minute. But as you can see... He is starting to lose troops. His lifeguard is, has gone. The Semenovsky are about to go. Um, and the, our old guard went as well, which was a bit of a shame. But these uh, Polish Legion are going to try and break this Musketeer unit. And here comes the great Chasseurs, ready to fight these Prussian Fusiliers and break them because they cannot form square. Building, and as you can see, what seemed like an unwinnable prospect has now turned into something completely different. It looks... Almost winnable at this point. But look at these bodies everywhere. Brutal, brutal fighting. But fantastic battle. Fantastic battle to be a part of. Uh, Prussian Fusiliers. So as you can see, he has some musketeers and some militia in this house over here as well. Uh, some musketeers over here and some musketeers in this house. So he's very defensive, this Prussian player. There was no way he wanted to attack. Even over here, though, you can see the lines of dead. But there is nothing compared to the field of dead. The carpet of dead over here, which is just crazy. And as you can see, finally, <coughs> excuse me, we have won out. Finally, we have won the house. And at this point, we knew what to do. We knew where we could go. And we could come up and round and out of sight of that darned, uh, darned six-pounder horse artillery. So at this point, kind of waited for a little bit. So we're going to probably just fast forward it for a little while. Um, and as you can see, he is trying to damage the house. But from that distance with a six-pounder, it hardly does anything. Three percent. Everything, every time it hits, I think it's one percent, yeah. So it's really not doing much. Might be killing a couple of troops, but really not doing much at all. As you can see, these chasseurs come round. I believe these are his chasseurs, the leftover remnants, trying to snipe that Prussian general. And here they go. Oh, that was a beautiful charge. Wonderful charge. Kill him. Marshal Vluka, kill him. Do not let Marshal Wardfords survive. Interesting thing about Blucher, guys, the Prussian general in the Battle of Waterloo. Um, I'm sure some of you already know this, but in the Battle of Ligny, just before the Battle of Waterloo, where the French won, Marshal Blucher was assailed by some French cavalrymen, him and his, uh, his staff, and he only survived because he fell off his horse and his, um, his uh, staff, luckily there was a quick-thinking staff member who decided that uh, it was a good idea to throw a great coat over him so that the French horseman couldn't see who he was and see all his gr gold braids and epaulets. <laughs> so that, basically, that uh, member of general staff kind of saved, saved the Prussian and British day at Waterloo because I do not believe 
uh, that if they were led by the second in command, I can't remember what his name was, he just didn't seem to like the British at all, um, that they would have gone to support the British in that endeavour. So, here we are, ready to fight. And I believe these are all my troops left now. He has these cavalry and the general, um, as well as this chasseur regiment. But I believe the rest of these guys are actually my troops leftovers. <coughs> and he is trying to skirmish with me with those Prussian fusiliers, which is very annoying. But some other interesting things about Marshal Vortvards, guys, known as Marshal Vortvards because he was called Marshal Forwards, because he would um, stand close to the, uh, you know, close to the front line on his horse, telling men to go forward or Vortvards in in German. I'm, I don't think I'm saying that right, but uh, he would tell men to go. Um, he would tell men to go uh, uh, forwards constantly uh, at the front line. So that is why he got that name, Marshal Vortvards. Um, on top of that, he was a bit mental. He went through bouts of uh, madness where he <laughs> thought that he was pregnant with a baby elephant to a French infantryman. So, you know, although he was a great general, he was slightly, slightly, you know, a bit crazy. Um, but here you go. Here comes the general staff. Getting into that cavalry, and I can't believe he missed this, to be honest, the French Prussian blade, because he's not got much else going on, really. Um, but he missed this brilliant attack by Vasco into the back of that general staff. And as you can see, he only has Prussian fusiliers, so he doesn't really uh, have anything to combat this cavalry. He has no one to put in square, apart from those musketeers. And as you can see, uh, Vasco is going to run his cavalry away, which was a very strong move by him. And we decided, I decided to bring my guys down here. You can see they are getting a bit tired. And that is going to play a big factor into the battle going forward. The tiredness of troops, eh? Very nice. Very nice. I still have my Polish Legion in the building, which has taken 7% damage. But they are probably just staring in horror at the amount of friends and enemies that have died this day. This guy died so hard that he even fell through the building. And some feet was nailed to the wall in memory of the troops that died. Look at this. This guy This guy has just seen too much horror. He's just staring at the wall. Hello, darkness, my old friend. As you can see, the Prussians decided to mount a charge with their general staff. And we did well combating it. I decided to bring my old guard and young guard around the side. To try and destroy these Prussian fusiliers. And I kind of was so focused over here and on this that I didn't even really see the Musketeers, I'm not going to lie. Which is a bit embarrassing on my part, but they really didn't do too much damage. They targeted the Young Guard that were very, very damaged already. So, didn't really do too, too much damage. And as you can see, he is going to get his Chasseurs into the fight. So that was a decent shout by him. And run these Chasseurs in. Uh, into melee to stop them firing and at that point we made these guys run so we managed to turn around and get some really good shots into these darn musketeers that had been a thorn in our side and look at that brutal fighting while the shots rain into these musketeers fantastic here it goes so this battle has really encompassed the whole map it's been a very very tactical and brutal battle genuinely i don't think i've ever been a part of the battle where one small area has been congested with so many dead troops it is crazy absolutely crazy but as you can see he still has a lot of troops in this building but there is only 75 so they are very damaged but there shouldn't be only 75 but that's because of the opal shenny that he's moving out of the building. And uh, we only really noticed that sort of later on. So we didn't really notice it too well at the start. Uh, and those chasseurs are shattered. They are going to run. Now, losing my chasseurs was a key point in this battle. They should have, di have not died so easily. But 
as I say, I am trying to get better. I'm trying not to lose my cavalry so quickly all the time, which um, which has always been a bit of an issue. I do tend to throw my throw away my cavalry very quickly and very early. As you can see, we were trying to catch these guys out, but no, we didn't manage to. We managed to get some shots off, but not a huge amount. And as you can see, these young guards have used all their ammunition now. So therefore, let's charge them up into the cannons and see what happens. Yeah, it's been an excellent battle, hasn't it? Very, very fun. And as you can see, this Polish legion down to 32, fighting the militia in the battle in Hougoumont. But unfortunately, it is going to be for naught. Because there was too many Russians and they're even blocking them on the way out. Killing them as they try and run away. But these Polish Legion did an amazing job. Got to be MVP for me. Fantastic unit. But as you can see, bringing the old guard. We're bringing the Polish Legion in to try and kill these guys. And the old guard do frighten enemy, as you can see. Uh, concerned casualties sustained. But that morale being so low is most likely because the old guard are nearby. And, and as you can see, they, they've routed straight away. they routed very quickly. My young guard didn't quite manage to make it. They got shot to pieces before. And they are just getting lined up and shot down. Which is a brutal treatment. Um, but yes, at this point, we managed to get this building. And it was a kind of a bit of a stalemate. So let's uh, fast forward it again. Um... La Haye Saint, I believe that's called La Haye Saint. <sighs> Can't quite remember. Not as focal, but what it did was basically when the French columns were coming up the hill, it would break them up so they had to go around it without getting shot too much uh, in order to face the cannons and the infantry up here. And even when the cavalry came under Marshal Ney, they were breaking up. Uh, breaking up the French attack. But the French did eventually manage to take we La Haye Saint. The building, uh, but as you can see, I sent my uh, old guard in to deal with those militia. They did take a few losses dealing with them. And that is mainly because they were tired, very tired. And this was something that was pointed out by, in fact, the Russian player. So thank you for that, Pastor, anyway. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, because at this point, we decided it was time to probably rest the, the troops a little bit <coughs> get them healthy again uh, my general's dead of course so this is still uh, vasco's general ready to go uh, but he still had a rally and all that stuff remaining you can see these Olpenesh, Olpesh, i can't say that word Olpelsheni, ready to go still uh, but um, as you can see oh look at this this was one of the closest fights i think i've ever seen you can see the militia are just not in a good position. Not getting any shots off. And look at this. Here it comes. Here it comes. But they managed to get a, a, a shot off just before he charges. And look at them. Shooting them down. This is so close. Look at the, look at the morale. Both sets of troops. Really, really close. But the general just manages to get that little bit of extra morale. And route those boys. Make sure that they didn't come back. And he shattered them so that they couldn't come back. But look, this old guard is tired. So he's getting less tired. And as you can see, he is firing into this building. These Polish troops here. Taking control of the building. But yeah, as you can see, the Prussian troop really didn't want to uh, attack at any point. And at this point, we just had a bit of a stalemate. So it is going to take a while for us to get to con the concluding part of the battle. But we really needed to be tactical about this and think about what we were going to do. Otherwise, it would have just been a rout on our part because we had less troops. We did have more elite troops, but definitely a lot less troops. Um, you can see he's got two pretty healthy musketeers, a six-pounder horse... And two Prussian Fusiliers. I do have two Old Guard. Um, but I also have... They also are pretty damaged. Lost two-thirds of their troops. And a Polish Legion that's lost more than two-thirds. Nearly half of its troops. So we, are, we have very little left. 
Uh, very little. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. What is this one? I can't remember what this building's called. But while we are here waiting for the action to unfold, let me see what those middle buildings were called. I can't, I'm pretty sure it's La Haye Saint. Um, Battle of Waterloo map. Yeah, I love uh, Napoleonic history, guys. It's very interesting. French Revolution and that. I really, really do find it very interesting. And that's part of the reason why I love these... Um, uh, love these... Chateau de Hougoumont. Yeah, we've seen that one. That one doesn't actually have the building names on it. Yeah, it was La Haye Saint. And then Papalot on the right-hand side. And as you can see, we marched around the right-hand side to get out of the way of his canister shot. And we decided to just do a couple of volleys into these guys just to shoot them. Because we believe that they would rout with the old guard nearby, which is very much true. So as you can see, they did take a few losses, which was a bit annoying. Uh, but they are going to uh, eventually rout when we get a good volley into them. And as you can see, we're just waiting for these guys to take the shots. Come on, guys, get into the... And a couple were just milling behind, which was a bit annoying. But, but as you can see, they're going right down their morale. Right down, very, very low. But he just has the range on us at the minute. And it's really annoying because we have to keep jumping forward and jumping backwards uh, in order to fight him. And he is running those six-pounders away. As you can see, this old guard is, decides to run, which was a massive blow for us. Um, where did his general go? So he must have attacked his. I think he attacked his general into that six-pounder horse artillery, which caused a bit of consternation, caused his general to run. But yeah, here we go, getting over the hill, and I really just wanted to rout some of these guys. Because they were just a thorn in our side. Just very, very, very annoying. Uh, and you can see this old guard will most likely come back. Here they go, the Polish. Let's go, boys. Shoot them. Look at that. That is a very good volley. Some very good shots in there. And as you can see, it was just enough to rout these boys. But just as we did that, we ran out of ammo as well. And they, I believe these first Prussian Fusiliers ran out of ammo as well. Otherwise, he would not be charging them in. But yes, there we are. So we've cleaned up nearly all the troops. Apart from these two units of Musketeers and the six-pounder horse artillery. And at this point, it was just a matter of waiting. Making sure these guys got nicely, nicely rested. Because as you can see, they are very, very tired. But let me know what you guys thought of this battle anyway, because I thought it was pretty epic, pretty good fun. I know it's been a very long video, um, a very long battle, but yes, I did really like it. I thought it was really good fun, this battle. And uh, we are going to uh, just crush through the rest of the time, because for a very long time, we did just wait in this divot away from his six-pounder horse artillery. But yeah, attacking on Waterloo is always so hard to do. Uh, because, you know, all the advantages are to the defender. So us even managing to, you know, get to this point and we're still in the battle. It, it's been a decent performance by us, I would say. Um, yeah, and it was a very hard battle to win when you're going up against it, up a hill, into buildings that the enemy control. So, yes, it was a, um, I'd say, a very decent performance by us, to be fair. Which... You don't get. I don't get to say about my Napoleon Total War <laughs> performance very often, um, but I was getting a lot of tips from Vasco, and he was, you know, kind of uh, messaging a lot. We were messaging each other what to do next, and that always helps. You know, you've got to work together, which is why we both went for the um, both went for this side of the map. And as you can say, it's coming right down to the wire. Four minutes left. Four minutes, and here it comes. The final countdown, guys. The final countdown. Here come the old guard. Here they come, ready to fight. Can they beat 295 musketeers? 55. So 155 old guard and 76 Polish legion. Can they beat that many musketeers? 
And he does something very clever indeed. He brings his troops out, uh, one of his units out, so the other can still keep firing on us. And that was, in fact, a very, very good idea. Something that probably won him the battle, if that gives away who won. But here is the final charge, boys. Can't even tell between French and Prussian troops, really. Just that these are Old Guard and Polish Legion, not the standard Musketeers. Here's the flag of Prussia, proudly proclaimed out here. As you can see, he is bringing even more troops out, ready to go. But our, our, our um, morale was getting so much lower. But Vasco did have a rally left. So if we'd have managed to keep that general alive, we might have managed to get the rally off here. But honestly, I don't think we would have won still. I think the old guard were just too depleted and they're tired as well. Whereas these guys are active. I just don't think it, they would have won. We do manage to defeat this musketeer. As you can see, he's concerned, casualty sustained, and the fact that he's fighting old guard. So at this point, it was kill or be killed for the old guard. And much like the real Battle of Waterloo, it all comes down to them at the end. What can they do? We'll look at them getting shot as they enter the building. It's a bit weird how they just all congregate like that because you basically can't miss, can you, if you're one of these musketeers. So it would be nice if some of them ran in to the actual building like that and stopped these guys firing. It's so hard to assault buildings. And as you can see... We both kind of thought this old guard was going to go, and it was down to the last one. But there's just we're just not doing enough damage, especially with all these fire, this firing going on. If we had a full unit left, we probably would have won. But with all the firing that's going on, you can see this old guard is routing, much like the real Battle of Waterloo. Uh, and it was down to the last unit of the old guard. A glorious battle, guys. A glorious battle that took place... Mainly down this left side, and I know I keep saying it, but look at the fields of dead here. Brand new carpet in Hougamont of just dead bodies. It is just crazy. Look at it. Wow. Wow. And the fight still rages on inside the building. Inside Papalot, as we found out. Going for those musketeers. But eventually, the poor old guard, they're going to break. And they rout from the battlefield and leave us defeated on the field of Waterloo. As you can see, very decent numbers from everyone. The 1,500 kills, 1,600, 1,951 by Pasta, 1,500 by Galjum, the uh, Prussian player. But I think assaulting on... Um, assaulting on... Um, on Waterloo, like, for us to nearly win... I think was a very decent very decent uh, result and let's have a look at some of the kills from these guys this old guard 225 this polish legion 179 that's crazy for a polish legion they were definitely mvp look at them all of these kills the young guard didn't do so well and neither did the chasseurs look that only got six um but yes what a fantastic battle guys i hope you enjoyed because i really did i thought it was one of the best battles I've seen on Napoleon for a while. So please do give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Let us know what you thought of the battle in the comments down below. And I'll see you again on the next video.